Ja, frid och välkommen här till morgonsändningen idag, den 17 i 12 där idag. Vi ska läsa ifrån Jesaja 10 och de tre första verserna. Det är alltid frågan om pengar. Till och med de här klimatnissarna som håller på här så handlar det här om pengar. Ve dem som stadgar orättfärdiga stadgar och skriver orättfärdiga lagar för att förvrida rättvisan för de nödställda och beröva de betryckta i mitt folk deras rätt för att göra enkor till sitt byte och plundra de faderlösa. Vad ska ni göra på räkenskapsdagen? När förödelsen kommer fjärran ifrån. Vem ska ni fly till för att få hjälp? Och var ska ni göra av era rikedomar? De har alltså samlat åt sig rikedomar på den här jorden. Och nu ska vi ta och titta på lite klipp här. Vi vill ta upp King Charles när han talar och det är den hetlevrade roliga Caddy som tar upp det här så kommer en Sky News efter. Och visste ni om att King Charles är New Ageare och Gaia, han tillber i mode jord och han luktar och talar med blommorna. Han är nästan som tjuren Ferdinand. <laughs> ja, så är det. Och det här kommer ju att bli världsreligionen, det förstår vi ju. Och det vi förstår mer är att uppenbarelseboken 13 kan ju inte vara långt ifrån när vi har fått hört det här. Och sen har vi news, flash då, och sen en massa klipp och så vidare. Så hörs vi under dagen. Guds välsignelse på er alla. Amen. Go Prince Charles made a way for helping everybody to understand what the spirit of antichrist was all about. He made reference to all kinds of things that we know are coming in the last days and he hasn't changed one bit. Here we are in 2023 and now King Charles has doubled down and you won't believe what he just told you. Make no mistake about it. He is undoubtedly demonstrating the spirit of antichrist and we need to wake up because what you're about to watch is absolutely crazy. You've heard from this fraud before. Let's listen to him back in the day when he was a prince. Ladies and gentlemen, my plea today is for countries to come together to create the environment that enables every sector of industry to take the action required. We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. Trillions, not billions. Remember those key words, right? Let's minimize the value of cash. And if you think that's not really what's happening, Take a little bit more of a listen because he's about to talk about the Antichrist. Yeah, ah, the Antichrist. Yes. But wait until you hear what he said at the most recent COP28. Oh, this is crazy. But take a listen to what he continues to say. We also know that countries, many of whom are burdened by growing levels of debt, simply cannot afford to go green. They can't fix the climate. Nobody can fix the climate. Here we need a vast military style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector. Vast military style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector. That means make an army of everybody to take away from you whatever they want you to not have. Oh yeah. Let's take it a step further in case there's a little confusion about what's happening or Maybe there's a little bit of conflating of terms. I don't know. Oh, but wait, folks. This is just review. We're going to get into the new fraud in just a second. And this guy is absolutely that. But he's the king now. So it'll be interesting. Wait till you see what he says. Here we go. With trillions at his disposal. Trillions at whose disposal? At his disposal. Who's his? Buckingham Palace won't tell you. You can't find this transcript anywhere. Yeah. Who's his? Maybe the Antichrist? I don't know. I'm just speculating. Far beyond global GDP. Far beyond global GDP. That means the cost of fixing this climate problem will be far greater 
than the gross domestic product of the whole world. Oh, yeah, I'm being a little dramatic. I probably should be. Here we go. Let's do a little bit more. And with the greatest respect, beyond even the governments of the world's leaders. Beyond the governments of the world leaders. So the culmination of every government, including the GDP of every government, they can't handle this problem, which is why we've got to marshal the strength of the global private sector to accomplish a military-style campaign while trillions, not billions, goes to some guy that he hasn't even named at his disposal to be able to do what he chooses to do with the whole world. Sound like Revelation 13 to you? Maybe. But listen, if you're still wondering whether or not he's calling for the destruction of cash, take a listen to this. And by the way, folks, this is old news. Wait till you see the new video. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. Here we go. It offers the only real prospect of achieving fundamental economic transition. It offers the only real prospect of achieving fundamental economic transition. Huh? Huh? In other words, let's go cashless because that's the only way we're going to solve this problem with everything that's happening with the climate. Yep. By the way, that was 2021. 2021. Now we hit the fast forward button. And we go to today, we go to this week, we go to more fraudulent insanity. Shall we play now King Charles? Listen to what he says concerning climate change and what we ought to be paying attention to. Again, more buzzwords, folks. This is crazy. We are quickly heading towards the world of the final Antichrist. And I'm going to go somewhere with this. Very important you pay attention to this. This is critical. Listen to this. Ladies and gentlemen, in your hands is an unmissable opportunity to keep our common hope alive. Ladies and gentlemen, in your hands, there is a what opportunity? Let's, let's play that again. What opportunity? Here we go. Is an unmissable opportunity to keep our common hope alive. Unmissable opportunity to keep a common hope alive. Take advantage of it. There might be a crisis or two coming, folks. Pay attention to what he's about to say. This is very, very important. I can only urge you to meet it with ambition, imagination, and a true sense of the emergency we face. And together with a commitment to the practical action upon which our shared future depends. The practical action on which our shared future depends. What practical action is he talking about, folks? I can tell you what, you might get a hint of it in Revelation 13. But let's continue on. After all, ladies and gentlemen, in 2050, our grandchildren won't be asking what we said. They will be living with the consequences of what we did or didn't do. Listen to the words of an expert grifter here, right? Yeah, 2050. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised he's not saying 2030, but that's a different story. So if we act together to safeguard our precious planet, the welfare of all our people will surely follow. And we need to remember, too, that the indigenous worldview teaches us, teaches us that we are all connected. How does he identify the indigenous worldview? I'm really curious about this. Is he talking about people that are in Africa that don't have any real discernible language in the United Kingdom? Like, what is the indigenous worldview? What is he trying to bring about? You know when he speaks about indigenous worldview? He is basically talking about the secular humanistic philosophy that has been pumped in the minds of people everywhere through the programmers that are being paid for and bought by the globalists. That's exactly what he's talking about. The world philosophy that he is talking about here is satanic and it's demonic. I'm going to tell you why in a second. Pay attention to what he says. This is crazy. Not only as human beings, but with all living things and all that sustains life. So we all got to come together as all living, living human beings and, and sustain life. Here we go. As part of this grand 
and sacred system, harmony with nature must be maintained. By the way, harmony with nature must be maintained. This is something that they've been saying for the longest time. But listen to what he says at the end. Pay attention to how deeply satanic this statement is. Listen to this. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. Tell me, would you rather do what Genesis says? Or would you rather listen to this guy say this to you right here? Harmony with nature must be maintained. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. Sorry, King Charles. The earth does belong to us because God gave us the earth. Plain and simple. Folks, I want you to understand that we are undoubtedly in the last days. You are watching right now by speeches like this, a series of conditioning going on that is designed to get you to think along the lines of the secular humanistic philosophy to go right down that road because they want you to be embracing of the spirit of Antichrist so that when the final Antichrist comes, you will not have a problem with what he says. The Bible actually tells us in Revelation chapter 13 that he will require every man, every woman, every child, right, to take the mark, the mark of the beast, which is 666, on the forehead or on the right hand. And in Revelation 14, it tells us that there will be angels that will be begging these people to not take the mark or they will die. And the reality of it is they do it anyway. Why? Because of convincing grifters like this guy. And the terrible part about it is we are seeing evidence that we are already in the last days. They're trying to program us with their public relations nonsense right here, and they're continuing to propagate all kinds of ridiculous evil things that we knew we'd see in the last days, like anti-Semitism. And it's getting darker and darker and darker. 28, this climate conference was kicked off by none other than King Charles III, the bloke who lives in a range of castles, palaces and farms with the carbon footprint of a coal-fired power station, but with none of the benefits. This is a bloke who speaks to his plants and runs one of his cars on wine or cheese or something, and he is out to lecture the world. I mean, he sure likes to talk up his own efforts. I've spent a large proportion of my life trying to warn of the existential threats facing us over global warming. Well, thank God he's been warming, warning us, hey? And he doesn't mind scaring the kids either with a bit of catastrophism. How dangerous are we actually prepared to make our world? Scary stuff. He even likes to bring in a bit of religion. I pray with all my heart that COP28 will be another critical turning point towards genuine transformational action at a time when already, as scientists have been warning for so long, we are seeing alarming tipping points being reached. I suppose praying for the planet isn't a surprise given he heads up the Church of England, but then even the Pope sent a message and he seemed less interested in religion and more focused on politics, wealth redistribution and getting away from self-interest and nationalism. Climate change signals the need for a political change. Let us emerge from the narrowness of self-interest and nationalism. Long gone are the days that religious leaders stuck to religion. But then let's get back to King Charles III. And remembering his religious status, he was starting to sound like he now worships not God, but Gaia. And we need to remember too that the indigenous worldview teaches us, teaches us that we are all connected, not only as human beings, but with all living things and all that sustains life. As part of this grand and sacred system, harmony with nature must be maintained. 
The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. We belong to the earth. This stuff is all getting a bit too much, isn't it? It is a new woke religion. It's not about science at all. But let me go back to what Charles said about tipping points. We are seeing alarming tipping points being reached. Really? Another tipping point. We're all going to die in boiling oceans again soon because of some tipping point. Doesn't this stuff sound kind of familiar? Because time has quite literally run out. Alter our behaviour before we risk the tipping point of catastrophic climate change beyond which there is no recovery. We have only seven years before we lose the levers of control. Please, ladies and gentlemen, be in no doubt that unless greenhouse gas emissions reach their peak within about 100 months, just 100 months, it may well be too late to stop temperatures rising beyond dangerous levels. We are running out of time. How many times have I found myself saying this over recent years? How many times? Well, yes, well may he ask that. He is still saying it 15 years later. Hamas proved that murdering Israelis is even more important than preserving the Islamic holy sites they claim to protect. Watch this video. Hours ago, just hours ago, Hamas rocket was fired towards the vicinity of the Temple Mount, Haram el Sharif. And the Iron Dome, Israel's Iron Dome, intercepted the missile and defended Al-Aqsa Mosque from Hamas. Think about this. Israel is defending Al-Aqsa Mosque from Hamas's missiles. To the Arab League, to the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, I ask, this is who you have chosen to defend? A group of genocidal terrorists that prefer jihad at any cost over Islamic holy sites? Just as ISIS destroyed mosques, Hamas, ISIS is willing to blow up Al-Aqsa. And so many of you are willing to defend them. Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> 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 